Hi guys, so in this video we're going to continue where we left off the last video on the undo support and look at the view side of things. And as well as the undo support, we're also going to look at support for multiple views of the same document and also some uh, plain text clipboard support. So you'll remember from the last video uh, I introduced this new interface, iText Document View, and mentioned that it would be implemented by the views. So let's have a look at what we've done over here in the view to support that. So the first thing you'll notice is the document um, has a register view method, which we're calling to register ourselves as a view. I've also added a document method uh, property, sorry. And you can see we revoked the old view and register for the new view, as well as reset some stuff here. Okay, so we now have the ability to change the view, um, sorry, the document associated with the view. Okay, let's have a look now at the implementation of that interface. Um, so you can see here I've got three methods that implement those three methods. And you can see the document change. What we do is, because um, down the track it's possible to get multiple uh, document view, sorry, document change events for the one um, batch of changes, we actually don't update our selection or repaint or anything until the end. So what we do is we start with a pending selection based on the current selection, and then we update it as we get these document changes. And then at the end, we apply those changes. Okay, so obviously the bulk of the work is in this on document change. And you'll also remember in the last video, I mentioned that there's a concept of an initiating view. And this is the reason we need this. The way the selection and carrot position uh, and scrolling in the document is updated depends on whether we're coming from the view that initiated the change or whether we're a, another view of the document that's currently not focused. So depending on which view we are, we behave, we, we behave differently. So in this case, when we're the um, view that initiated the change, Depending on the edit semantics, we update their selection differently. And this was the second purpose of these edit semantics that I mentioned in the last video. So for the different semantics, we update our selection differently, basically. And it's basically just whether the caret goes forwards, backwards, whether the selection is, um, or the inserted text is selected after the edit operation and so forth. So these are just maintaining all of those different behaviors. In the case where we're not the view that initiated the change, we actually want to behave quite differently. What we want to do is we want to try and preserve our existing selection um, as best as we can for the edit that was made. So if, if text was inserted before our selection, we want to just nudge it along. If it was afterwards, then we want to just leave it as it is. If it's inside the selection, we want to perform uh, different operations to try and best match that selection. The other thing that we want to do, and I'll show you all of this in a second, is if the change is um, at a position that scrolled off the top of the current view, then we want to update our content offset to try and keep what is currently on view visible. We don't want the other view shifting around. We want to try and keep it still if we can. So that's what this code here is doing. It's just looking for a change in height and then getting the position of where that actual change happened. And if it was off screen above where we're currently viewing, then we just adjust our content offset according to the change in the document height. And that'll keep us stable in that regard. So I'll just run this to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see I've added a button here just to bring up a second view on the same document. So let's say I select this text here and bring up a new view. You can see if I type before it, we're shuffling the selection along. If I type after it, there's no effect on the selection. And if I type within the selection, the selection is extended. Now, if, if the selection that we're modifying overlaps, the behavior becomes a little bit ambiguous, but basically we just try to maintain it as best we can. Okay, and then, then as far as the scrolling is concerned, let's say I go up here and I've just put in a bunch of paragraphs. 
like so. If I'm, if the selection is over here, we want to try and maintain this position if we're editing above. So you can see here, I can edit, I can insert new paragraphs and the scroll position of that other document is updated to keep what was on view still on view. Okay, so that's, that's what the other part of this here is doing. Now, there's one um, kind of elephant in the room with all of this, and that is that the layout of the document is based on the width of the editor, and we can actually resize these independently now. So this actual multi-view scenario is actually not actually useful when the layout of the document is based on the width of the editor, but it would be perfectly fine if, for example, this was uh, like a word processor where you had a ruler at the top to set the width of paragraphs. Um, but this is good enough for now to just check that that multi-view structure is working. Okay. Um, the other part of the undo redo mechanism is we now have a on undo. No, we don't. We have an undo call here. So to we've just mapped Control Z to document undo, and Control Shift Z to redo. Control Y is also redo, so we've mapped that as well. And these just call straight into the document, passing ourselves as the initiating view so that we can do the correct behavior in the on document change. And that's pretty much it for undo redo. The other thing that I've implemented now is um, some simple copy paste text. So you can see I've just uh, got these key codes here for the various operations mapped to on copy, on cut, and on paste. We'll have a quick look at those. Oh, the other thing I should mention is that, yeah, we're now using replace text now for all the edit operations. So if you look at on backspace, you can see we're just calling replace text. On delete, we're just calling replace text, passing null for the text that we're actually replacing because it's a delete. And on the insert, we're actually passing the selection and the text to insert. And we're passing these various semantics as well. So the last video or the video before last you would have remembered that after here we were updating the selection so all of that is now moved into the document change handler okay back to clipboard um copy operation is only valid if there's an actual range selection uh, we get the text from the document so this is a new method on the document which i'll show you it just takes a text range it normalizes it to make sure it's a forward selection we're using this same get intersecting runs to enumerate over the document and we just build up a UTF-32 buffer that has the sections of each paragraph as required. Now, this function returns the UTF buffer. It will have the paragraph separators for the paragraph breaks and it will have new line characters for soft breaks. So just back in here, you'll see what we do is we actually replace the paragraph separators with new line characters because in this case, we're trying to copy to a plain text format, which doesn't technically support paragraph separators. So we're just putting in new line characters instead. And then this is just GUI Kit's way of setting text on the clipboard. So we're just taking that text, putting it on the clipboard. Cut is almost trivial. We just copy and if there was a selection, we delete it as well. And then paste, we get the text from the clipboard. If we got text, we do a bit of cleanup. We actually handle the Windows line, carriage return line feed format map that to a paragraph separator and we also map new line characters to paragraph separators and then we're just calling replace text Now there's a little bit of funny behavior here when we paste text we actually want the selection to behave very similar to typing text in other words we want the selection to go to the end of the new text and not leave the new text selected but we also don't want to be able to extend that operation by typing afterwards so we just tell the undo manager to seal itself Okay, so that's pretty much it for copy paste and I can show you some simple operations here working. So you can see I can copy a paragraph and paste it, copy within a paragraph, and you can also see that it works between apps and also the other way around. Okay. So that's clipboard operations working. Um, there's still a lot to be done on clipboard when we get to the rich text side of things. 
um, but my main priority for this right now is to get plain text editor working um, because I have some other requirements for that uh, in Cantabile, so I'm keen to get that working. But that's it for this video. That's undo finished. It's uh, plain text clipboard working and multiple views and all the selection tracking and carrot positioning uh, stuff related to that is all uh, set up and working. Okay, thanks guys. I hope you're enjoying these videos and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.